Hello Rust developers and welcome to the Rust project video series. If you want to learn anything about Rust, this is your channel. Rust navigation, Rust with drones, Rust for autonomous cars, everything Rust is here. Learn Rust step by step and push your Rust learning in just 10 minutes of video. I am Marco Arruda and today we are going to use a mesh file in a URDF model. So in this video we will learn how to use this mesh file for a given link of a robot and the properties we have to set in order to use this file, okay? But before any few, anything else, remember to visit the Robot Ignite Academy, our online academy where you find practical courses about ROS using simulator robots, no installation required. you find a link to the academy on the video description. Now let's start with the project. So I'm going to start from the project of the previous video, uh, video number five. So let's open it and wait a few seconds until our environment's ready. Great, so there it is. First thing I'm gonna do is in the IDE, I'm gonna go to the simulation workspace where we have the package and the files related to the robot model. First thing here, I'm gonna change the name of the folder because I have this name here because that's the, the full name of Bitbucket system because I have cloned the repository in the previous video. So now I'm going to put the same name we have for the package, okay? That's because ROSDS is going to find, is going to search for the mesh files inside folders like that, underscore description or modules, okay? And after that, I'm going to create a new folder where I'm going to save our mesh file. I'm going to call it meshes, okay? So I have the st STL file here in my local computer. I'm just going to drag and drop here. And there it is, now we have the file in our project. And now let's go to the URDF file. We have to modify this file in order to use the mesh. So the first thing here is that I have created this mesh using a CAD software. And this is related to the link number one. Okay, so link number one, here we have. And the first thing I'm gonna just simplify the the model, it's easier to debug and develop for the robot. So let me comment the rest of the robot. Okay, we can finish here. And we're gonna use only the first link, which is the base of the robot, and the second link, which is the one I'm gonna use my mesh file, okay? So we are using chakros to render the links of the robot. So let's open this file. And I'm going to create a new chakra here to use uh, mesh links, to create mesh links, okay? So we have one to generate joints, another one for cylinder links, another one for boxes, and now let's have one for mesh links. So I'm going to copy and paste here, and we can see line by line what we're doing. So basically, I'm calling it uh, mlink mesh. I have changed some properties here. So I have removed the size because it was related to uh, the box property. Now we don't have size anymore, but we have mesh file and mesh scale. So we have removed one property and added two others. Okay. So we are using mesh file here. So we have in the collision property and visual property, we are using the mesh uh, tag here, so inside geometry you are using mesh, and we have we have only to set here file name, which is mesh file, and the scale. This is very important. I'm gonna explain a bit more later what is this mesh scale. Okay, but basically this is just a new chakra function. We're gonna use it to generate this mesh file. Okay, so we have to change here. We are not using a cylinder anymore. We are using a mesh link. So we don't have anymore the length, neither the radius of a cylinder. Instead, we have a mesh file. So yeah, let me add here. So we have to, to look for the mesh file inside the my robotic description, my robotic manipulator description meshes and the name of the file, link one, version two. 
and also the mesh scale. I'm going to add right here. And there it is. So what is this mesh scale? Basically, I have drawn my robot using uh, millimeters as the unit. So that's why I'm using here. Uh, as you can see, the scale you are basically telling that our unit is meter divided by a thousand. Okay, that's it. So it's just a, a matter of when you're exporting your model, you have to pay attention to that. So you have to set there that you're not for in my example, I'm, I was not working in inches. I was working in millimeters. Okay. So that's what the scale is about. Okay. And mesh scale, we are setting here scale, these values here. Okay. So in order to spawn the robot, now let's change our spawn file because I have simplified the robot. So we have only a single joint. So we cannot spawn controllers for joints that don't exist. And also, let me see, link joints. We have the spawn file. We have created the, the mesh folder. And that's it. So let's try to, to spawn it. And let's visualize first in Arvis. Put it bigger. And we have ROS launch, my robotic manipulator, description, Arvis. Let's launch it. Wait a few seconds until it's ready. And there it is. As you can see, we have here the mesh file. Okay. So we don't have a cylinder anymore. We have actually it's a base plus this part where the next link would be fixed. Okay. And there it is. Great. It's perfect. It's working. So we have in Arvis, but the position of the mesh is not okay. And that's because let's take a look here in the main chakra file. Uh, when we started the project, we were generating a cylinder uh, using purely URDF. And we are when you are using URDF, the robot is the the link part is generated. For example, if you set the origin in a specific position of the space, so if you specify a cylinder here, the length of the cylinder is gonna grow upwards and downwards. Okay, and when you're using a mesh file, it depends on your project, of course. So you have to start, it's good to start drawing from the origin of the software, of the space that the software provides you. So in this case, I think I, I, I didn't do it. Let's try to change this, this value here. So we're going to put in the origin and uh, we sh should not have this space between link, the base link and the link number one. So let's start. Let's restart Arvis and we may have the model correctly render. Let's take a look now. Okay. We still have a space. That's because I have drawn, uh, not from the origin. Okay. The, the base of the link is not in the origin. So we have to do like this. Let's move to closer to the, to the box link. And great. There it is. Now we have it correctly. And as you can see, we still can move the link. Okay. Everything is working as previously. It's just a mesh file. So we're just making the robot uh, more beautiful, let's say. Okay, so great. Now we have it working Arvis. Let's try to spawn the robot in a in a simulation environment. In order to do that, I'm going to start an empty scene simulation. We're using Cosibo here in ROSDS. Let's wait a few seconds until we have the simulation. Whoops. 
And let's prepare Ross Launch, my robotic manipulator description, spawn. Make sure that you're not spawning the controllers. So I have removed the controllers for the joints that I have removed on purpose, of course, because I'm just simplifying the robots better to, to see the mesh we are working with. Okay, so now we have the, the empty scene. Let's spawn the robot, enter. Let's wait a few seconds and we have no error here. The controller was spawned for, for the first joint. And there it is. Look how, how nice it is to have a mesh instead of just using boxes and cylinders. That's what URDF provides for us. So that's it. That's all for today. In the description of the video, you'll find a complete course about URDF and all the resources mentioned in the video. Did you like the video? If you did, please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel and press the bell for a new video about ROS every day. Either like it or not, please share your thoughts and questions in the comments area. See you!